What's up guys, Dr. Jared here, Tone and Titan. Hey, if you've got pain that sits deep in your glute, kind of deep in your backside right here, that may or may not be associated with numbness and tingling and pain down your leg, you're in the right place because today I want to help you to get rid of that. This video is all about piriformis syndrome. We'll talk about what it is, why you get it, and most importantly, I wanna show you a few simple stretches, exercises, and other things that you can do at home to help eliminate this pain. Now, first of all, what is the piriformis? Well, it's a small muscle that sits deep to your glute, and it looks something like this. You'll see that it starts right here on your pelvis, it goes out to your femur bone, and it's responsible for this motion called hip rotation. Now what happens is when that muscle is irritated, it can pinch down on your sciatic nerve. You'll see that the muscle sits right on top of the sciatic nerve. When that gets irritated, again, it can pinch down on there, it can cause that numbness, that tingling, and that pain in that spot and down your leg. This is typically caused by things such as sitting for long periods of time, sitting on a wallet especially can put a lot of pressure on that area, crossing your legs, pregnancy, this one's super common in pregnancy, my wife would get this all the time with all of her pregnancies, and muscle weakness. Again, those are just a few of the most common causes that I see. So what do we do about it? Well, we've got to promote relaxation in that muscle, we need to stretch that muscle out, and we need to strengthen that muscle so that it doesn't come back. And again, that's exactly what you're going to get for the remainder of this video. I hope these things help you out. Of course, if you do find relief from the things that I present in this video, I'd love if you hit that thumbs up button. Also leave me a comment, comment your experience down below. I love to hear from you guys. That being said, first exercise coming your way right now. The first thing we need to do is promote some relaxation through that muscle. A great way to do that is with a mobilization technique right here on the foam roller. What you're going to do is sit on the foam roller. For this demonstration, I'm going to say it's over here if the problem were on my right side. With my right hand, I'm going to reach back behind me, and now the right leg crosses over my left, so right ankle over my left knee. What that does is it introduces a really nice stretch to that area, but now what we can do on this foam roller is roll up and down. You can kind of rock your hips in and out, side to side, and as you roll around, you'll find areas where it's actually kind of tender to do this. Again, that's areas where that muscle is tight and balled up. What I usually do in my clinic is I'll set a one or two minute timer and just have the person kind of roll out just like this, just until we get that piriformis nice and loosened up. The other thing that I like to show people is if you've got a tennis ball, you can do the same thing. Now keep in mind, this is a little bit more aggressive. Some people, this is a little too much, so it might be something that you work up into. So with that tennis ball, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna put it right on that spot, and honestly, sometimes even to just kind of mobilize that area just like this is enough. If you feel like you could do even more, we can get back into that same uh, kind of figure four position, that same stretch position, as we use that tennis ball just like this. Tennis ball, lacrosse ball, softball, uh, those are all things that work well in this case. Now, keep in mind that in some instances, we are increasing pressure on that sciatic nerve. If this increases your pain, or if you feel any more symptoms down your leg with this, it might be a little too soon, might be something that you back off on, with goals of working up into it. So again, about one or two minutes once a day on the foam roller. Now, after we've got that muscle loosened up and mobilized, we're gonna follow that up with some stretching. Here are three of my favorite for that piriformis. First thing, what we're gonna do is lay down on your back. If it were in my left hip, what I'm going to do is bend my left knee up to my chest, but rather than just pull that knee straight up to my left shoulder, what I want you to do is pull it over into your opposite shoulder. So my left knee is going up and over. I'm pulling with my right hand, so it's coming up towards my right shoulder, just until I get a good deep stretch down here in the back of my hip. That's where I like to start, people. What you would do is you'd hold that for 20 seconds, and then you would repeat it three times. If that feels okay, what we can do is move into a little more aggressive version of that stretch. What we're going to do is now cross that left leg over your right. With your hands, you're gonna dive right down kind of in the hole right here, and then um, hook your hands behind your right thigh. Now what we can do is lay down nice and relaxed. Now I'm gonna use my arms and pull my right knee up towards my right shoulder until I get even more of a stretch introduced in the back of that left hip. And so it looks just like this. 
Once again, hold for 20 seconds and repeat that three times. Now, I mentioned earlier that piriformis syndrome is really common in pregnancy. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get down into that position depending on how far along you are. The stretch that saved my wife, this is the one that she would do all the time, is uh, very similar to what I just did. What you do is come to your bed and now you're just gonna take one leg and you're gonna lay that up on top of your bed just like this. Keep really good posture and then just lean forward. And as you lean into it, you'll feel even more of a stretch right there in your deep glute. So again, this one works well for pregnancy or if you have a hard time laying on your back or if you lack the range of motion or strength to hold those other positions, this is a really good option to do that. Same parameters apply on this one. What you would do is hold that for 20 seconds and repeat it three times. Our last three exercises have to do with strengthening that piriformis muscle. These are crucial if you want that pain to stay away long. Term. So let's get into it. What you're going to do is lay down on your side with your bad hip up. So if it were my right piriformis, I'd put my right hip up. What I'm going to do is bend my knees to about a 90 degree angle. You're going to keep the soles of your feet together and open up just like this and then return right back to that starting position. So I'm using that piriformis muscle. Again, it's a deep hip rotator to rotate my knee away from my bottom knee while I'm keeping my feet together. And what you should feel is again, that muscle working right here in the back of your hip. I typically recommend that people perform this one about 10 to 20 repetitions, and then you can repeat that three times. The next exercise, we're gonna move into a horizontal abduction motion. And so this is going to be, well, I call it a fire hydrant. You're gonna see why here in just a second. We're down on all fours. My hands are below my shoulders and my knees are below my hips. I'm gonna keep my hip at a 90 degree bend and I'm gonna keep my knee at a 90 degree bend. I'm going to use my hip to pull my knee up towards the ceiling and then return right back down to that starting position. Again, you're gonna to try to feel this one right in the back of your hip, and a good number to shoot for is 10 to 20 repetitions, and we're going to repeat that three times. This last exercise is one of my favorites for piriformis syndrome. This is going to be a single leg deadlift. You're gonna stand on the affected leg. The other leg starts to go back behind you as you hinge forward at your hip. From this position, we're gonna pull with that glute to return to the upright position like this. What I don't want is for your back to round forward. A lot of people will just get this leg like right here and then they'll round forward at their back. So try to keep your back straight and then as you hinge, that other leg needs to come up behind you as high as you can take it. The other thing that I tell people is I don't want your hips to collapse. So as you come down, I don't want that hip to rotate down and I don't want it to rotate up. You should be able to maintain a nice even pelvis as you're going down into that motion. And typically what I recommend is about 10 repetitions on the affected leg, but then let's keep things even. Let's do 10 repetitions on the unaffected leg as well. Now with piriformis syndrome, it's important that we maintain flexibility with stretching. It's important that we maintain strength. If you're looking for more ways to do that, check out this video right here for some of my favorite hip stretches. Here are some of my favorite hip strengthening exercises that might help. If you haven't subscribed to Tone and Titan, hit the circle right here to do that. And we'll see you again soon here on Tone and Titan.